Drum solo. Honeycomb, also known as Android version 3, was the worst operating system of all time, maybe even worse than Windows ME Millennium Edition. I have Honeycomb running here on some pretty interesting and experimental hardware, the Sony VAIO Tablet P. I'm Brandon Miniman, and in this video, I want to revisit why Honeycomb was so bad and why it caused Google to mostly abandon their tablet efforts. And so let's take a look at the hardware on the Sony VAIO Tablet P. As you can see, it's a clamshell design, which is actually pretty smart because inside you get two 5.5 inch displays. So in effect, you get a large screen and a footprint that allows you to put the device into your pocket. Back in 2011, when this device came out, tablets were big, like iPad big. So portability really wasn't possible with a tablet. The Sony VAIO Tablet P made it possible to get a big screen in a small form factor, a small footprint, something that could fit inside of your pocket or your bag. Unfortunately, you get big black border between the screens, so it's not a continuous large display. In terms of specifications, the Sony VAIO Tablet P has an NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core CPU. It also had one gigabyte of RAM and four gigabytes of expandable storage, plus it had an embedded SIM card in this case on AT&T, where you could get AT&T 3G. The battery is around 3,000 milliamp hours and charges with a proprietary barrel charger, and the standby battery life on this device isn't really that good. This was when Android really wasn't optimized like it is today for battery life and standby battery life. The UI of Honeycomb is an early version of Google's Hollow UI, which we saw in Ice Cream Sandwich Android version 4 on phones. But in Honeycomb, it just wasn't ready. It was a combination of black and blue colors and weird fonts that were just difficult to read. In Honeycomb, certain parts of the OS, like the app drawer, were bright white for some reason. And then there were the apps. Even Google's own apps looked like blown up phone apps and not two pane UIs like we saw on the iPad. Since developers never thought Google was serious about tablets, few updated their apps to take advantage of the bigger screens. By far, the worst part of Honeycomb was its performance. Whether dual core or quad core, whether two gigs of RAM or three gigs of RAM, Honeycomb device had, had such poor performance to almost be completely unusable. Scrolling was choppy, multitasking was terrible, even the launcher seemed unfinished and just terrible. This was long before Android 4.2 Jelly Bean came around with Project Butter to allow Android to run at a consistent 60 frames per second. Overall, Google really abandoned their tablet efforts after Honeycomb. They really didn't do much. I think that they just realized that phones were getting bigger and people really wouldn't have such a need for two devices like they might have back when phones were about four inches, which is kind of a small screen. Now phones have six inch screens, six and a half inch screens, and you really don't need to have two devices. Plus, if you want the best tablet experience, you're just gonna get an iPad, for being honest about it. But as far as Android goes, they missed the boat, probably because Honeycomb was just such a bad first impression of what a Android tablet experience would be like. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree that Honeycomb was one of, if not the worst operating system of all time. And thanks for watching. That's it for now.